Hello, I'm Yolanda Bonds. I'm Professor of Real Estate at UCL and Chair of the Bartlett Real Estate Institute. I think I would argue that a rethink was already happening in real estate, um, or should have been already happening in real estate before the pandemic struck. And it's getting to be a bit of a cliche in some circles now to say that, that COVID just accelerated or catalyzed a whole series of trends that were already in train, as it were. So uh, the obvious impact is uh, the use of technology. Uh, we'd already seen technology massively disrupting uh, the retail sector as e-tailing took over. And of course, that, that's almost been completed during uh, the pandemic. Um, but, but increasingly, uh, new working patterns have changed the way people think about both their workplace and their home. And it really caused people to question the whole sort of nine to five commuting ethos. Uh, so cities that used to suck in millions of people every day and disgorge them every evening, um, you know, are, are, are changing. The geography of cities is changing. Which, and, and as soon as geography changes, real estate changes, uh, the way people uh, use buildings, the demand for buildings, the demand for, for homes has shifted. I think it's very difficult to talk about an urban centre as, as a, a single homogenous thing. What we've seen is that the really big cities that used to uh, you know, suck in young people in particular and large numbers of workers every day um, have probably been the ones that have suffered most. And you can see a, a clear rental trend. Um, uh, you know, inner London saw falling rents in the, in the year to, to June 2021. But the future's still urban because it, other urban centres, smaller cities, even towns, uh, were started, have started to attract people to live, work, play, stay, make, trade and do all the other human things that people do in cities. And so you've, you've seen whilst the, the big cities sort of declined a, a bit in terms of real estate value, the uh, alternative small places, which are just far too numerous to li list, but are not all in the southeast, you know, often heritage uh, elements or uh, a lot of regenerative sort of elements. So a very good example would be Folkestone, you know, c uh, formerly uh, declining coastal town, recently, sort of in the last uh, 10, 20 years, regenerated uh, around an artist's quarter the traditional streetscape, great sort of uh, traditional real estate, and of course a huge uh, sort of environmental draw, if you like, a, a kind of uh, you know, seaside vibe and, and lots of really interesting things going on there. You know, that, that's shown huge rental growth over the last year. So you can't generalise about the future of the city. It, it's actually which city? How well managed is that city? How well curated? You know, how well is the place kept? And that's where we come on to the uh, importance of experience in real estate. ESG, the environmental, uh, social and governance of values of companies are becoming front and centre, not just of their sort of publicity material, but what investors are increasingly realising is that it's front and centre of investment performance. Financially, economically, um, businesses and places are much more sustainable where they're environmentally sustainable and socially sustainable. The, the, the three go together. They're not easy to achieve, but they are easy. E, the EES, if you like, rather than ESG. And where the governance of a place, um, where the place keeping, or indeed the, the governance of a company, is in line with that triple bottom line of eco economy, environment, and uh, society, if you like, then uh, I think you get the, re the really good commercial results 
Um, and I think the value of real estate in particular is utterly dependent on the prosperity of places, the prosperity of neighborhoods. It's that that uh, the property manager, the asset manager, if you like, is actually needing to manage going forward and enable in partnership uh, rather than um, just, as it were, building something and expecting the market to follow. Build it and they will come. It doesn't work anymore. So, so the reason why the real estate experience is the, is the number one driver has, has many facets and aspects. But one very simple aspect is that the value of real estate in future will be driven not by cap rates and the serial trading of an ever-growing sort of capital, capital value, but instead it's about the value robustness, longevity of income streams that will determine value. Now you only get sustainable income streams if you have sustainable urbanism and, where, and only then if you're managing for sustainability, which means managing the social and the environmental as well as the economic. What I love about um, this this conference is is the way that it, it's as it were recategorizing real estate. Real estate's been very high bound by traditional sort of late twentieth century asset classes, global asset classes, where hospitality is something separate uh, um, to uh, residential, which again is separate to offices. But what we're seeing, po especially post-COVID, is the mixing of all these uses, the uh, hybridization, and the uh, the fertile sort of use uh, of, of real estate of place and um, that's what this uh, conference sort of re re repositions itself in. that's the new world that this conference repositions itself in okay my favorite bit was the futurologist I I, 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 I um, I just, I just love uh, hearing about new trends and, uh, you know, Bitcoin and tokenization, they're pretty new to, to, to the industry. But what I really loved was the idea that there might be real estate out there in cyberspace, as it were, in these virtual realities. Um, that, that's got me thinking, and I haven't fully formed my thoughts, but um, really good conferences always give you something to think about, and that was definitely one. It's, it's, it's always good to uh, talk <laughs> to people you don't need, no, normally talk to or haven't had a chance to, to get face to face with uh, for, for a good few months now. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a great believer in, uh, in, in conferences. I think uh, the, the, the challenge for all conference organisers going forward is probably going to be opening it up for people who may not be physically here as well as for people who are physically here. That hybrid uh, sort of event, I think, still eludes us. Uh, but it, yeah, it's great to be back face to face with other people.